Hi everyone, Ryan here. Welcome to our step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build a Shopify store from scratch. I'm going to show you how you can have a fully functional, professional-looking Shopify store that's ready to start selling your products and captivating your target audience. We'll start by setting up our Shopify account and claiming an exclusive one-month offer. And then after that, we will dive deep into customizing your store's theme, adding and organizing your products and collections, fine-tuning your store's navigation and settings for optimal user experience. So by the end of this video, you will have a comprehensive understanding of how to use Shopify's powerful page builder to create virtually any design that you desire. So without much further ado, let's dive right in. So to get started, let's go ahead and log in to Shopify. If you don't have an account yet, then you can begin with a free trial by using the link in the description. After the free trial, you can choose to continue with any one of Shopify's plans for only $1 a month on your first month. It's a great opportunity to start at a lower cost. So go ahead and click the link, follow the simple sign up process, and you'll be ready to go. Once you've completed the account setup process, you will land on the Shopify store dashboard. From the dashboard, we want to click on online store in the left-hand menu. You will see that we have the default Dawn theme, which is a versatile and modern starting point for many successful Shopify stores. Now you can choose from different free Shopify themes such as Spotlight and Refresh, but I'm going to continue with the Dawn theme. So choose the theme that you want and then click customize. This is where we will have full control over our store's visual elements and the layout. And we're going to start with customizing the homepage banner. So in the theme editor, select the top section of the homepage, which is typically a banner or a hero image. So you can drag and drop that image into the first image section that you can see right there, or you can select one from the free library. So if you haven't decided on an image yet, you can click on change and then go to explore free images. From here, you can select the category that you want. So for example, let's say that I'm making a women's fashion store. I click on that section and then I choose any image that I like and click select. If you want to brighten the image further, then you can drag down the image overlay opacity from 40% to 30 or 20. And then further down, you can see the desktop content position. So if let's say that the text that you have on your screen is not really positioned correctly, then you can change that from the bottom center to bottom left, etc. In my case, it's better if it stays in the bottom center in my opinion, so I'm going to leave it like that. Essentially, you want to create an eye-catching and balanced layout. Moving on, we're going to edit the text and the buttons. So click on the text in the banner to update the tagline. Make sure to use compelling and concise language that captures your visitor's attention and communicates your unique value proposition. I recommend setting the text size to small for a clean and modern look. Edit the button text by clicking on the button and then update the text to clear call to action. Something like shop now or discover more. Double check that the button links to all of your products page by setting the button link accordingly. And you can do that by clicking on the button itself. And then looking at the right side menu, there's the first button link. From here, you can make any button link to any page that you want. So for a button like buy now or shop now, maybe discover more about our store, you can link it to the all products page just like this. Another important thing is to uncheck the use outline button style and then fully style the button to make it visually prominent and clickable. So usually I like to make it bigger as to stand out even more. So once you've unchecked that, click on the button itself and then to the buttons right above it. And now you can see the solid button background and the solid button label, outline and the shadow. From here, you can change everything that you want for the button. I like to make it stand out even more by changing its color and the background. Usually a bright color does the job like blue or yellow, but make sure it fits the rest of the website and doesn't look odd. After that, you want to preview your store on mobile devices. As more and more customers shop on their mobile devices, it's crucial to ensure that your store looks and functions flawlessly on smartphones. So to preview your store on a mobile device, click on this mobile icon in the top right corner, and this will show you how your store appears on a smaller screen, allowing you to make any necessary adjustments to optimize the mobile shopping experience. Next up, we're going to add some products to our Shopify store. So let's navigate back to the Shopify dashboard and then go to products and click add product. You'll be prompted to enter the product's name, which should be clear, descriptive, and include relevant keywords. You want to write a compelling product description that highlights the features, benefits, and unique selling points of your product. So for my clothing store, I'm going to add this dress. I'm going to give it a compelling title and then add some description. Of course, add some high quality product images that showcase the product from different angles and in use. Now you want to set the price based on your pricing strategy and market research, and then fill in any additional information regarding the inventory, shipping, and the product variants, such as if your product has a different size, color, or the material. Click save to add the product to your store. 
Additionally, you can create collections of your products. This is a powerful way to organize your products and make it easier for the customers to find what they're looking for. So click on collection in the Shopify dashboard and delete the default homepage collection as it's not needed. Create new collections for different product categories. So for me, I would make one for women and then another one for men or new arrivals. You could choose any other relevant groupings for your own products. And then I'm going to add a collection image that visually represents the category and entices visitors to click through. Once you're done, click save to create the collection. After that, you go back to your products and select the products that you want to add to a specific collection. Use the checkboxes to select multiple products at once. You want to repeat this process for each collection, ensuring that all of your products are organized and easily discoverable. And now that we have our products added, we're going to go back and fine tune the store's navigation and the settings. And we're going to start by customizing the header. So return to the Shopify theme editor and select the header section. This is the top part of your store that appears on every page and typically includes your logo, navigation menu, and all of the other important links. So let's go ahead and upload a logo by going to the theme settings, finding the logo section and dragging and then dropping your logo image. Adjust the logo position to the center or wherever you want, as long as it creates a balanced look. After that, a clear and intuitive navigation menu is essential for guiding the visitors through your store and helping them find what they're looking for. So in the Shopify dashboard, click on online store and then navigation. Click on main menu to edit your store's primary navigation. Remove any unnecessary items such as the home or the catalog in order to streamline the menu. And then add your collections, the ones that we created earlier, to the menu, ensuring that they are logically organized and easy to understand for the customers. Move the contact item to the right for easy access and then click save menu to apply your changes. Next up, we're going to configure the footer. The footer is the bottom section of your store that appears on every page and often includes important links, social media icons, and all of the other relevant information. So in the theme editor, let's select the footer section, remove the email signup box by unticking if you don't plan to collect email addresses at this stage, and then add your social media links in the theme settings to display the social media icons in the footer. This is great because you encourage the visitors to connect with you on other platforms. Click on policy settings to set up your store policies such as privacy policy, terms of service, and if you want to incorporate a refund policy. I would recommend using Shopify's templates as a starting point and then customizing the text to fit your business. Fill out the shipping policy and contact information to provide transparency and build trust with your customers. And now we're going to set up the payment providers and shipping. This is important to start accepting payments and shipping your products. For that, you will need to set up your payment providers and the shipping settings. So back to the Shopify dashboard, click on settings and then payment. Click complete account setup in order to enable the Shopify payments. And then you'll be asked some simple questions about your store in order to enable the Shopify payments tab. Shopify payments is the simplest way to accept payments, but you can also add other payment providers like PayPal or Stripe. And then under the shipping and the delivery, we want to set up our shipping rates and then the profiles or the regions based on your products, locations, and shipping methods. To give your store a professional and memorable web address, you'll want to connect a custom domain. If you already have a domain, you can connect it to your Shopify store under domains and then connect existing domain. And if you need a new domain, then you can purchase one directly through Shopify, making the process seamless and convenient. And lastly, before launching your store, it's important to preview it and ensure that everything looks and functions as intended. So in the Shopify dashboard, click on online store and then themes, click the preview button to see your store in action. You can navigate through your pages, test your links, and make sure that your products and collections are displaying correctly. Of course, make any necessary adjustments in the theme editor or the Shopify dashboard if something is wrong. We can also add a favicon, which is a small icon that appears in the browser tab and the bookmarks, and it helps to brand your store and make it easily recognizable. So to add a favicon, go to the theme editor and click on the theme settings tab, scroll down to the favicon section and upload a square version of your logo or a simplified icon that represents your brand. Once it's uploaded, click save to apply the favicon to your store. And finally, by default, your Shopify store is password protected while you're working on it. And this prevents it from public access. So when you're ready to launch, you will need to remove the password protection. And you can do that by going to the Shopify dashboard, click on online store and then preferences. 
And then you can scroll down until you see the password protection section. And you can see the random password that Shopify has selected for you. So uncheck the box and then your store will be live and accessible to everyone. And just like that, you now have a fully functional, professionally designed Shopify store that's ready to start accepting orders and making money. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you found it to be helpful or informative to watch, then go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And definitely be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any follow-up content that we can make related to this one.